Okay, there are five hills that I will die on, different players on this Jets roster. Uh, number one, Bryce Huff is not just a situational third down and long edge rusher. Now, it's fine that he's doing that right now in the deepest edge room in the NFL, but I think for future roster planning purposes, when we fast forward to next offseason, if the Jets were to let Bryce Huff walk, I think that would be a dire mistake. Now, I'm not saying that Bryce Huff is Miles Garrett, a guy who's going to play 80% of the snaps and dominate against the run in the past. What I am saying is that his limitations against the run, I think, are worth the trade-off of his elite pass rushing efficiency. So I think he's played, what, 18% of the snaps last year. I think he could be a player who's a rotational edge that plays 45 up to 50% of the snaps and is highly productive. And yes, you'll see some diminishing returns uh, with his pass rush efficiency with a higher volume. I understand that. But he had the fa- he has the fastest get off time in the NFL, uh, best pass rush win rate, uh, best pressure rate in the NFL of all the edges with uh, enough snaps to qualify. And I think we have a proof of concept here within our own division on a really good defensive line. The Patriots, who had more sacks than even the Jets last year, Josh Uche, 6'3", 245 pounds, a speed edge rusher, not really great against the run. The Pats played him 42% of the snaps last year, and he had 12 sacks. 12. When's the last time the Jets had an edge with 12 sacks? John Abraham? So, yeah, Bryce Huff, to me, that is the kind of player I see. 45, up to 50% of the snaps, and you get him on a nice little three-year, what, 14, 15, $16 million extension, um, I would do that. And you might say, well, Will McDonald is going to fill that role. And I say, well, wait a minute. If a undersized 240-pound speed rusher is worth the 15th overall pick, then uh, he's worth a modest extension. And you know, Bryce Huff is made of granite. <laughs> right now, Bryce Huff is stronger than Will McDonald. Believe that. Maybe Will McDonald can be a better run defender because you know he's a really good tackler. He's got long arms. He has experience playing the four-eye. But, man, I think the future of this edge room uh, could be Michael Clemens and Jermaine Johnson as your big ends, and then Will McDonald and Bryce Huff as your speed rushers. Obviously, you don't want to be paying... Carl Lawson and JFM, 15 plus million forever. Bryce Huff, I hope he is part of the future of this Jets team. Uh, Next, hill number two, probably the most unpopular hill. Uh, I think Corey Davis is the second best wide receiver on this football team when he plays, which I understand is already a pretty big hurdle and pretty big caveat. And yeah, I'm a fan. I've jumped up and said, cut him, boo, when he he drops the passes in front of my TV. I understand that. But if we remove our fandom out of it, and we we looked at Corey Davis as if he was never on the Jets, and you're you're a fan of another team, and say he was released, and you're wondering if your team can be, should be interested in him, and you look at the trajectory of his career, what reasonable assumption would you make? Because in my opinion, there's really only two assumptions you can make about Corey Davis, who, top 10 pick in the draft, uh, goes to Tennessee, probably a, a disappointment based on a draft pedigree, but a really highly productive number two wide receiver when he was in a good offense um, and asked to play that role. He had two seasons of 900 plus yards. His drop rate was respectable. His contested catch rate was respectable. Okay? And he was a good or an elite blocker. Then uh, with a middle of the road quarterback, right? Then he comes to the Jets with the worst quarterback play in the league. Uh, those quarterbacks are behind the most injured offensive line in the league. And those plays are being called by an offensive coordinator who gets fired. So are we assuming that a Corey Davis forgot how to play football at the age of 27 and that it was all a mirage him putting up those three really solid, uh, number two wide receiver seasons in Tennessee. That was all made up, make believe. Or number two, is it possible that Corey Davis is still a highly productive number two wide receiver in a functioning offense, but doesn't have the all pro talent like Garrett Wilson to produce in a complete and utter mess? Like, let, let's be clear. The Jet, I was at a Thursday night football game. I was there and I watched our starting quarterback get benched 
for literally a CFL quarterback. A Canadian Football League quarterback who doesn't get any of the first team reps in practice, who doesn't have any experience in the NFL, who probably doesn't even have really great familiarity with the playbook because the playbook is fully different when he comes in. And he comes in and they're running shotgun, just design quarterback runs, and him throwing meatballs out there. And the offense gets better. The offense gets better than what we had. Right? And then you compare that to Al Lazard or Mikko Hardman, who may be the other two candidates, who, while Corey Davis was experiencing that, were catching passes from two of the top five most talented throwers of the football, literally in NFL history. Like, that context has to matter. When Al Lazard was in a good wide receiver room, uh, he was the number three. When Devontae Adams and Marcus Valdez-Scantling were healthy, they were above him in the pecking order, and he was getting like 400 yards a season. So I, I don't even know how that's close uh, between Davis and Lazard. And Hardman, I like Hardman. And, and he's got a shot to get the second most amount of targets too. Uh, but he, uh, Davis is the only one we can say that about who has been for multiple seasons a highly productive number two wide receiver in a good offense. He's the only one we can say that about. And I, it's it's like telling me if we're acting like Corey Davis's stock should have gone way down with the quarterbacks that we had last year. It's like telling me you, you had a, a good SUV for a few years, but then you decided to put ranch dressing inside of it instead of gasoline, and it didn't run very well. I don't care. I'm not putting ranch in it anymore. That means nothing to me. What can Corey Davis be in a functioning offense? We know. And in fact... There's another level to this. If he can do that with Ryan Tannehill, what can he do with Aaron Rodgers? And what would Alan Lazard and Michael Harbin have done with Zach Wilson, Mike White, and Joe Flacco? There's a, a stat for... Uh, I, by the way, I know this is net serious, but it's dead season. Uh, there's a stat that Football Outsiders keeps track of uh, the accuracy of tar your target share. So the percentage of the balls that are thrown your way that are quote-unquote catchable balls, Corey Davis, 54% of them. There were 97 receivers who had enough targets to qualify. Corey Davis ranked 97th. He had the least percentage of catchable balls thrown his way. Al Nazard last year, 8th. Miko Hardman, 11th. They were both hovering around 80%. So you could take 30% 30, 30 of the targets that Corey Davis is getting you might as well just spike him into the ground compared to the other two receivers. So I think Corey Davis is, is a better route runner than Lazard and Hardman. And uh, I think he's faster than Lazard. He's bigger than Hardman. And I think he's the number two. Uh, all right. Hill number three that I will die on is, I don't know if it's that much of a hot take, but I think John Franklin Myers uh, is the second best defensive lineman on the New York Jets for my money. I, I think when we talk about this defensive line and guys we're excited to see, obviously Quinn is number one, uh, but we're excited for Carl Lawson bounce back season. Of course, Jermaine Johnson breakout year two. We got woman Donald in the fold already talked about uh, Huff, right? Moving Michael Clemens inside. But to me, John Franklin Myers consistency, versatility, productivity, and durability. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, he is the best edge run defender. He is our second best interior pass rusher. He has not miss games. Uh, and he does a lot of things I think don't show up on the stat sheet. And analytically, he always crushes it. And if I had to bet of who's going to get the second most amount of sacks on the team next year, besides Quinnen, I think JFM, because I think he's going to get the highest snap count because he can play inside and out. I think Jermaine's going to bump up and that's going to bump Lawson down and McDonald's in and that's going to bump Huff down. And I think JFM uh, and it may not be a huge number, it may not be 10 plus sacks, but I think he's the number two on the defensive line. And uh, I can't call him underrated necessarily because he did get $55 million, but um, I think maybe he is sometimes a little undervalued by the fan base and maybe just doesn't get mentioned enough in the pecking order when we talk about how good this defensive line is. That's uh, number three. Hill number four. Uh, this one, <laughs> it doesn't really matter but Bryce Hall doesn't completely suck. I don't know what is the evidence that Bryce Hall sucks because 
I rem- as far as I know, Jets fans were saying Bryce Hall was maybe a corner one or at least a really good corner two. I was told we didn't need to draft Sauce Gardner because we had Bryce Hall. So he has one year of being the cornerback number one on a really bad team, and he plays okay. And he leads the league and passes defended, and he was far from the biggest problem on that defense. Probably the fourth best player on that defense in 2021. That's how bad the defense was. Then the Jets get two better corners, DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner, and he becomes a backup. Okay. Uh, then I think the two biggest things that happen are number one, he gets beat by Kyle Pitts in a preseason game. He gets beat by the most freakish athlete tight end ever. And then he gets a contested catch caught on him uh, where he has the ball that he's literally touching the ball and a Baltimore Raven wide receiver makes a really good catch. And then he gets benched. And then now it's like, Oh my gosh, he's the worst corner ever. We need to cut him immediately. Uh, no, <laughs> I have evidence of a full season of pretty good tape at corner for Bryce Hall. And I can't say that about any of our other backup corners, even though I do like Brandon Eccles probably better than him. Uh, Bryce Hall is a good backup corner. Is he good enough of a backup corner to warrant a $3 million cap hit? We'll see. But it's not like he's a complete scrub. I don't know where that came from. Uh, Hill number five. Finally, this one I don't have evidence for. This one is just a gut feeling. Uh, I think Tony Adams, well, I have a little bit of evidence for it. I I think Tony Adams is going to be the starting free safety in short order for the New York Jets uh, this season. I think Amos will have the, or Amos, however you say his name, will have the inside track next to Jordan Whitehead. Uh, But I think as the season goes on, I think you're going to see some youth start to take over. I think you'll see Jeremy Ruckert take over CJ Uzama's role a little bit. And I think Amos uh, will get replaced by Tony Adams. I think that he is the, He's a freak athlete. He has the best sideline to sideline range. The uh, the only player on this team that has that besides Ashton Davis, who come on. And also his experience of playing corner, both slot and outside. You know, there's there's teams last year where they would find ways to get like Whitehead uh, line up in the slot and, and just bury him. And I think with Am- Amos's legs at this stage in his career, they're probably going to do that too. So those two in coverage uh, scare me. You know, either one of them, if you had a really good free safety next to them, fine. But both of them together uh, as a coverage duo is pretty underwhelming. So I think Tony Adams' skill set would complement the more strong safety skill set of Whitehead and that of uh, Amos, Amos, whatever, (laughs) at this stage um, in their respective careers. So there are five hills I will die on. Uh, Dead season content. Why not? We'll talk ball soon.